Shalom. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe everyone is happy to be joining in. We greet all those who are joining in live now. As we say, we'll be talking about the power of your testimony. We we'll open our Bible in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Oh, can you give me the scripture? Just give me the scripture. Revelation chapter 11. Yeah. It says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the scripture reading and the anointing that is already here. Your, your presence, as you said, where two or three are gathered in your presence, you'll be there with them. Let your anointing take over as we preach the word. Let there be results in the life of your children. May burdens be lifted. May those who are sick be healed. May those, Father, who are seeking an experience with you get that experience in Jesus' name. Amen. Here the Bible is saying, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Meaning your testimony is powerful and your life will go the direction of your words. What you believe, what you speak, there is a high priest of your confession who will make sure it happens. So they overcame by the, 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 the words of their testimonies. There is the power in testifying. You must always speak positive things. That is the power of your testimony. Your testimony will move the heavens. Your testimony will bring results. It will make things happen. God will make your body obey your confession. So when you are sick and you say you are healed, God will make your body to obey your confession. When you say, let the, that's why the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Yeah, when, you, when you are weak and you say you are strong, God will make your body obey your confession. There is power of your testimony. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 19, verse, verse 10, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. When you are testifying, you are already in the realms of prophesying. You are speaking in, in advance. Even before you see anything, you start testifying that it's over, and then God makes it happen according to your words. The Bible says when it records the best testimony ever, it says by faith Enoch, he was translated that he should not see death because he was not found because God translated him. Before his translation, he had a testimony that he pleased God. This is the biggest testimony that you can ever have to please God because other people are healed, but they don't please God. Now, the prophet was preaching about a testimony on the sea talking about how when the disciples were off, uh, sailing with Christ, going uh, uh, over yonder, they were giving testimonies of what they saw in the revival, and Christ was asleep on the boat. When the devil was hearing the testimonies, he wanted to crush the testimony meeting. But no enemy can stop your testimony. What you believe, you shall have it. If you embrace it, if you testify of it, if you keep speaking about it, you shall have it. If you stick there, you shall have it. So when the devil was trying to attack, that's when Christ rose and gave them another testimony. When the devil tries to kill your testimony, you get another testimony. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. What you confess, what you speak, that's what he makes happen. The prophet says, listen close, you will never live above your confession. Jesus is the high priest of your confession. You will never live above your confession. So Christ is the high priest of your confession, according to Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verse 1. So when you confess something, that's what will happen in your life. When you testify about it. Now, a testimony gives birth to another testimony. When Samson wrestled with a lion and overcame the lion, he, he, he had a te the testimony, his next testimony was from inside the lion because... He then got honey from inside the lion. So a testimony gives birth to another testimony. When he overcame the lion, when he went back to that carcass and found that there was honey inside the, the lion. So your next testimony comes from the testimony that we had. So in Judges chapter 15 verse 17, um, when he had a job on and he used the job on to overcome a thousand Philistines, his next testimony, uh, the Bible says, when he needed water, God gave a hollow place in that jaw. So he got the next place of the water when it was the, the next testimony of the water from the job on. So the testimony of the job on gave birth to another testimony. So every testimony that is given is not barren. When you hear a testimony, you must harness its power. When 
uh, David was writing on the power of the testimonies that he had. When he met Goliath, he used the power of the testimony of the bear and the testimony of the lion. He says, the God who delivered me from the lion and from the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. So sometimes you write on the testimony of what you have already experienced, what God has already done for you. Now I will move on and um, God will make sure your testimony will come to pass. Now, when the prophet had a testimony that he's going to have a son, Joseph, when um, a girl was born, they thought it was Josephine. So, uh, but he kept believing and testifying until Joseph came. So what you believe, don't stop testifying, no matter how impossible it looks. Your story is the key that can unlock somebody else's prison. It's good to share your story, share your testimony, because... Your testimony will unlock the victory of somebody else. Your testimony is not yours alone. Your test will become your testimony. When a test is over, it becomes a testimony. So never silence your testimony. It is meant for somebody else, not only you. So you must never silence your testimony. But when you give your testimony, it makes somebody receive it. So you must harness the power like the horses. You harness the power of a testimony. When you hear a testimony, derive power from it. Harness it for it to have an impact in your life. I was giving a testimony about my mother, how God dissolved a cyst of the brain. As my, uh, uh, where the city scan was there, but when, through prayer, the, the cyst was dissolved. So when Sister Mercy from BV, also from Harare, heard that testimony, she then also she had a cyst of the brain and it was dissolved. So one testimony gave back to another testimony. In 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 4, when they were giving testimony to the king, Gehaz was telling the king what was done in the life of the Shunammite, in the life of that woman was, whose son was restored to life. As they were giving that testimony, she arrived and it became another testimony for the restoration of the land because in the next verse, in verse 6, there it says, God, uh, the king appointed a restoration officer to restore all what was his. So when a testimony was given, it gave birth to another testimony. So when we give testimonies, you must use them uh, in your situation. When Abraham was, was on, on the mountain there sacrificing Isaac and he said God would provide himself a sacrifice. And God created a lamb for him. When the prophet heard that testimony, he wanted squirrels and God created a squirrel. He said the same God who created the lamb for Abraham created a squirrel for him. When Sister Hetty heard the testimony of the prophet there, she was told also when she believed it and said, Amen, this is nothing but the truth. God made him, it says, ask anything that you want, it shall be given unto you. So when Brother Ed Dalton heard that testimony, she, he also believed for his family and he was given his 12 children. When Sister Stovell was, had that testimony also, she was given a family. So every testimony gives birth to another testimony. When Moses opened the Red Sea is, uh, by, by the power of the word of God, speaking the word and going forward, uh, when Joshua knew about that testimony and the Jordan was overflooded, they said the God who opened the Red Sea opened the Jordan for them. So when even Elijah was now facing the same Jordan, God opened the Jordan for Elijah. So when Elijah was facing that same Jordan, the God who opened it for, for Joshua opened for him. When Elijah again was facing that same Jordan, he said, where is the God of Elijah? And Jordan was opened. So meaning that a testimony can be brought back to be applied upon your situation. When I was preaching in Rusape, there was someone, I was speaking about how God healed a sister in Highland who had, who had eight years of ulcers. There was a sister who had three years ulcers and she gives a testimony there of how she was healed. So a testimony gives birth to another testimony. When I went to America, I visited Same Ade's clinic, the place where the clinic was. And I claimed and said, if God gave Same Ade through the prophet a clinic, a medical center, when I go back home, God will give me a surgery, another center. So this is the uh, maternity clinic that I got. Two months uh, I saw the advert after coming from America. So a testimony gives birth to another testimony. When we read in the Bible about how water was turned to wine, 
when Christ did the first miracle, we find when the prophet also was preaching and they ran out of communion wine, wine was multiplied. We read also the testimony of, of Brother Venon uh, talking about how the prophet stilled the Colorado storm. And when we were preaching in Pumula in a tent meeting, there was a storm and we spoke and the storm stopped. In that tent meeting in Pumula, um, the storm was stopped. I was preaching again in Tabasunduna um, all night prayer meeting. The sister that is uh, jumping up and down there is Sister uh, Nyamukama. When I just said, if you are like Hannah and you need a child, you receive your child. She started jumping up and down. Two weeks from then, she received a testimony, or she received a child. So when the word is preached, it is ministering healing, it is ministering salvation, it is ministering deliverance, it is ministering your breakthrough, it is ministering your victory, it is ministering your testimony in preaching form. When I gave a testimony about Sister Mtetwa, how she was healed of cancer. It was cervical cancer. She came on Sunday and we prayed for her and she was set free. When Sister um, Joe believed that testimony, she had a cyst, a demo had cyst of the ovary. It was dissolved. So what God has done, he can do it again. When you believe a testimony, that's why the Bible says, who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? If you believe the report, if you believe someone's testimony and apply it as yours, your testimony comes also. Your testimony has power to set other people free. How when someone hears your testimony, they, their faith rises and they come out of their situation. On the other side of every test is a testimony. That's where you have a personal experience with the power of God. So don't be ashamed of your story. It will inspire others. Don't hide your testimony. If we hide our testimonies, if everyone in the Bible hid their testimony, we will not have Hebrews 11. We will not have uh, the testimony that will empower another person. The prophet says, don't never let your testimony be negative. Let it be positive all the time. Say, I'm saved and give, uh, go, uh, I have got in my heart, I believe with all my heart. Do you believe in divine healing? With all my heart. Let your testimony always and your thoughts and everything. Never permit never negative thoughts to come upon your mind. When it starts, don't entertain it. So, when you feel like you are down, when you say it is impossible, God says all things are possible to them that believe. Um, when, when you say I'm too tired, God says I'll give you rest. When you say nobody loves me, God says I've loved you and I've given myself for you. When you say, I, I can't go on, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. When you say, I can't figure things out, God says, I'll direct your steps. When you say, I can't do it, God says, I, I can do all things through Christ that, that, that strengthens me. When you say, I'm not able, he says, stand still, you don't need to fight the battle, I'll fight it for you. When you say, it's not worth it all, God says, it will be worth it all. When you say, I can't forgive myself, God says, I've forgiven you. When you say, I can't manage, God says, I will supply all your needs. When you say, um, I have not, uh, I'm afraid, God says, I'm not given you a spirit of, of bondage unto fear. When you say, I'm always worried and frustrated, God says, cast all your cares upon me. When you say, I'm not smart enough, God says, I'll give you wisdom. When you say, I feel alone, he says, I will never leave you alone. So don't allow negative testimony. Speak positive because... There are promises that we are rich in. If you confess it with your lips and coming from your heart, he goes to work as a high priest, sitting at the right hand of God and of the Father, making intercessions upon your confession. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, uh, you cannot do anything until you confess it. Some people are, have, are figuring out the whole question that, how am I going to do this or do that? God will take care of it. If you just go on, God will take care of it. So don't allow the devil to destroy your testimony. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And uh, God is moving in our midst. God is doing a testimony for you now. Your testimony is in the making. Don't be like um, that, the, those uh, nine lepers. When ten lepers were healed, uh, only one came back to give a testimony. Are you part of the one or part of the nine? So nothing can silence your testimony. Even if you are in the pit like Joseph, 
that pit will never silence your testimony. Even if they lie to you, lie against you like a Potiphar's wife did, that lie will never silence your testimony. Even if they put you in prison, that prison will never silence your testimony because your testimony will still materialize against all odds, against all opposition. So, but to balance it now, the prophet says, don't profess anything that you can't pick up. The devil is going to call your hand upon it. So you speak a real testimony, be a true witness. This testimony was given by Sister Shtungo when she was give, they, when they wrote to her that she's supposed to repeat the exam. She says, I'm not going to repeat. She prayed, and then the testimony comes uh, that you have passed your exam. She did not rewrite, but she believed that God can intervene. In whatever you believe, God will make a way. Now, your testimony will make you affect your behavior. It will affect your mood. Hannah started rejoicing because she was seeing a testimony. You are a child of the king. So that, that slave in America was working as a child of the king because he believed that he's a child of the king. He was not going to be a victim of circumstances, but a victor in circumstances. So let your life be a testimony for God. Don't allow your life be, to be about what the devil, the devil has done this, the devil in my children, the devil in my life. Let your life be a testimony about God because you never know the power of your testimony until you share it. So you must share your testimony. Someone needs that testimony. When God gives you the Holy Ghost, share it. When God delivers you from bondage, from evil dreams, from evil imaginations, from evil thoughts, share that testimony. The Bible says uh, in Acts chapter 4, I think it's verse 20, we cannot help speaking of, about what we have seen or heard. When you see God doing something in your life, speak about it. It will encourage somebody. We cannot help. Now, the testimony of John Ryan, he was blind for 20 years. But when, the, when he came to the meeting, he was told, go and testify. Before you see anything, start testifying about it. So he said, I'm healed, I'm healed. Thank God, extra, extra. I'm healed until the eyes opened because God made the eyes to obey the confession. So there is power in your testimony. There is that Shunamite woman, uh, Aunt Jemima in Memphis there. She believed that God was going to send Elijah until the aeroplane had to be grounded for the prophet to come to her house. And the prophet uh, spoke to her and then the child was healed and delivered. Because of her testimony, she held her and she waited for it. Though it was going to tarry, she knew that it was going to happen. Now, you must believe before you see anything. Abraham uh, believed God and he called the place Jehovah Jireh. He says God will provide himself a sacrifice. He was already prophesying that God will create a lamb. Before he saw anything, he believed and started testifying. Like the Shunammite woman, when the child was dead, she said, it is well. She testified positive. Uh, before it happened, she spoke until it happened like that. Jonah, when he was still in the well's belly, he believed that he was going to come out. He says, yet again, I will look to the temple of God. So when he was still in that circumstance, when he was still in that situation, his testimony changed the circumstance. It's not the circumstances that change your testimony. We don't testify according to the circumstance, but your testimony will change your circumstance. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fire, when they were being cast, they said, our God is able. What are you saying about your situation? When you testify before it happens, God makes it happen. God joined them in the fire. Even Moses, when he was facing the Red Sea, when the armies of Pharaoh are galloping behind him, he says, the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more. If you believe that the sicknesses, the diseases, the poverty that you see, you shall see it no more, God will make it happen that way. Um, now the Bible says um, about Job, he says, I know my Redeemer liveth, and that those skin will destroy my body, in my flesh I shall stand. So he spoke his restoration, he spoke his deliverance and healing, and he stepped into it. We need men like Joshua and Caleb, who stood and said, we are more than able to possess the land. Though there were giants, though there were challenges, though things looked impossible, they testified that we are more than able, and God made it happen so. So Caleb said, give me my mountain. As a Christian, as a believer, you must claim your inheritance, claim what belongs to you, and testify of it until it happens. We must believe before seeing anything. Like Mary, she believed. And she says, let it be according to the sayings 
of the man of God. No woman or virgin had conceived before, but when she had a visitation, she believed God and said, let it be. That very minute when she believed God, she took conception. She started testifying, believing that it's already done. That's how you should take it. Like that woman who touched the hem of the garment of Christ. She, no one had done that before. She broke records. And from that time, because of your testimony, other people had to touch the hem and be healed. So with God, nothing shall be impossible. Your testimony is going to be alive. And like, like, like the four Hebrew children, they said, we are not going to defile ourselves with the king's meat. They said, whatever happens, we are going to stand on our convictions. And God uh, had to beg their testimony. When you say something, God will beg it. Uh, when something happens miraculous in your life, you, you believe that this can only be God. There is no way of explaining the miracle. Now, there are various testimonies that can happen in our lives. There can be testimonies of salvation, testimonies of a divine experience, testimonies of Holy Ghost baptism, testimonies of visitation, testimonies of divine healing, divine providence, divine guidance, divine protection, testimonies of, of de deliverance. But all testimonies is the wonders of God. Paul was always, when he gets a chance, he was going to stand before Agrippa, give his testimonies before Festus. He was, when you would say something maybe about the power of God, you would go back to the testimony of what happened to him. If something happened to you, share it with somebody. It will take them out of their prison. In Luke chapter 1 verse 45, the Bible says, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken by the angel. In another version it says, the things that were spoken will be fulfilled in their season. Um, uh, the promises will be fulfilled to you. So when you believe, it shall be fulfilled. Believe your, for your courtship, believe for your marriage, believe for your finances, believe for your job, believe for the rapture, believe for everything. She who has believed is blessed. In other words, if you have believed today, you are already blessed. Before it happens, you are already blessed. What if we dared to believe God uh, could do anything in or through us? We must believe that even the impossible can happen and you receive it spiritually in your heart and believe it, it will materialize and bring exactly what God said. Believe for your job, it will materialize. Believe for salvation. Believe for the Holy Ghost baptism, it will materialize. You just say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Your testimony of faith is a testimony of answered prayer. Now, God cannot use anything that is afraid. You know, Gideon had to send them back that were scared. Um, if you are afraid to testify of your healing before it comes, God cannot use you. If you are afraid to tell people that you received the Holy Ghost, don't worry, I doubt whether you have it. God wants heroes. He wants something that is brave to stand up and talk. So a man that's um, afraid, um, he's been healed to testify about it. Um, uh, and he's been saved and he's ashamed to tell somebody about it. He's filled with the Holy Ghost and he's even... Uh, he has no, I have no confidence in your salvation. When Simeon believed God, and it was revealed to him by the Spirit that he will never see death until he sees the Lord's Christ. He believed it in his heart. When something is revealed to you, it's already a testimony. When does it become a testimony? When it's revealed to you. When God reveals to you now that it's over, then you have a testimony already. It's already over. When God reveals to you that you are healed, you don't wait for the doctor's scan or what. It's already a testimony by the time it is revealed because faith is a revelation of what a now possibility. When the devil keeps asking you to look at your past, there must be something good in the future that the devil doesn't want you to see. So don't look at your past. Forget the things that are past and press to the mark of the eye calling. When I was turning 40 just this year, uh, I, was, I had an injury in my knee and my knee was, get, was swollen. So we're out with my wife celebrating. And then we just say, let's pray. We open Deuteronomy 8, verse 4, just like that at random. The Bible said, for all these 40 years, your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not blister or swell. When we read that and prayed, the swelling of my feet disappeared because I took it, raised him from history, from the Bible. I believe the hour is approaching when missing limbs will be restored and the glorious power of the creator. This is the hour where your testimony must materialize. Um, there's a testimony here that someone was saying, uh, Shalom, 
uh, man of God, I thought to share this testimony with you. It's good to share your testimony. I wasn't feeling well. I suspected it was COVID. I tried to test, but I couldn't. Last night, I couldn't sleep. The pain kept uh, me working me. I decided to listen to the message you preached, turning disrupting moments into defining moments. I felt better, and I slept through the night. I woke up feeling like a brand new woman. So the testimonies that we're giving in that message energized the body. We see now even the mother in law of the prophet when he, she prayed for a watch. The watch uh, became healed and it started working. She prayed for a fridge and the fridge started working. And then in this test, when Sister Martha, uh, our sister in Luveve there, read those testimonies of how the fridge and the stove started working, yet electric kettle was not working. Yet she's giving a testimony that is given, was given birth by the other testimony that the electric kettle after prayer started working. God works in your farm, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your, in your schoolwork, in your academics, in everything that you touch. If you give room for God, he works in that. So the testimony of David killing Goliath when he, had, when he cut the head of Goliath, that testimony made every Israelite to run after their giant and every giant had to fall. Everyone was down. When they saw the testimony of Goliath's head, there was a Goliath revival. They were revived and they knew that God can do something. I'm praying today that God will give you a divine touch so that that touch will make you also touch others. I will need to play this video uh, about the power of positive thinking. When, what the prophet says about the power of positive thinking, maybe I'll just give it four or so minutes, then I'll come back to give the testimonies. Let me play that video. I, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Now that's all right. If that's the best you can do, just mentally, or just say, well, I, yes, I, I see it. I believe that. I accept it. Then if you accept it on those bases, keep saying it over and over. Say it out loud. Say it over and over. Just keep saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. Say it until actually you believe it. And when you believe it, then it's going to take place. Don't have a negative testimony. Every time when you confess, well, I still feel bad today, I guess I you go right straight back in the same rut that you was in the beginning. There's not a man or woman in here that's baptized with the Holy Spirit, but what would start your confession, I believe I've lost the Holy Spirit, I believe it's gone from me, I believe I, you'll go right down, you'll never, can you listen close, you'll never live above your confession. Jesus is the high priest of our confession, is that right? Now, Hebrews 3, 1. Now, any scholar knows that same word, profession, is confession to. Same translation. Now, setting up the right hand of the Father to make intercessions upon what? Our confession. He can't do nothing for you until first you confess he's done it. See? When you accept it. Now, I wasn't saved. I'm not saved tonight because I get happy and shout. That isn't it. I'm not saved because the gift of God works through me. I'm saved because I have met the conditions that Jesus Christ required for me. I'm saved according to the Bible. See? Is that right? See? Oh, and not because I feel like I'm saved. Satan can whoop you around and stuff on your feelings. But he can't when it's thus saith the law. See? He can't to go that. He can't wait across that. That'll defeat him. Now, when you believed you were saved, sitting in your seat, out in the, wherever you was, you accepted it and began to confess and tell people you were saved. Well, you kept on saying, I'm saved. The people said, there ain't no difference in you. But you believed there was. Is that right? And you kept with your confession and after a while it worked righteousness. All your neighbors and everybody knows you're saved now. Because you believed it, you confessed it. Why? How what happened? What changed you? He's the high priest of your confession, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making good what you're confessing. Now... That's the same thing it is by healing. You accept him as your healer. Renounce your feelings. It's not about the feelings. It's by faith. Say you're healed. Believe you're healed. Act like you're healed. So shape with those who believe in healing. God bring you right out to a perfect soundness of hell. Will not fail. Just an illustration. I'm trying to get faith in you, you see. So I can see what the Holy Spirit can do here for us in a few minutes. Don't ever look at sin. Lady, don't you look because you're sitting in a wheelchair. 
of this young fellow here. That is no more than God than the YouTube. You're probably showing that the power of positive confession. When you speak positively, the high priest of your confession takes over. In, I gave this testimony some time ago about a sister. We had lost their calm, and she came for, uh, in our Hillbrook revival, and we prayed and said, God will give you back that car. And she found it, uh, she was called by Jamestown Police Station, and the car was there. When I gave that testimony, my sister again in Zambia wanted a truck that was taken to come back. And she got back her track. A testimony gives back to another testimony. Maybe let me give this testimony just a few uh, um, to... Let me play this one of the sister. Then when you hear these testimonies, let them ignite your faith and see what God can do. I'll just play maybe... Give two people to say their testimonies of what happened when we were in Kimberley, South Africa. When I was ministering in Kimberley, South Africa. Thank you, Lord. testimony it became a testimony meeting there were many testimonies that were given in that service after we had the prayer meeting the deliverance service there in Kimberley your needs today you should not just leave it as a testimony but draw it into your life and get your healing our God is able to make grace abound our God is able to keep that which we have committed unto him against that day he is able to establish you according to the gospel he is able to keep you from stumbling. He is able to do super abundantly above what you can ask. Now, I will end um, uh, by giving my testimony. I have a testimony. Um, I believe everyone has a testimony, and you are a walking testimony. My personal testimony of healing when I was sick, I remembered Donnie Rick and what he said when he said, God can borrow your body for a miracle. Some weeks ago, um, I went for testing. I, I had symptoms and I thought it was COVID. So I went to Corporate 24 and they did the antigen test. So I rejoiced when it came out negative and I was carrying a certificate. But as I was rejoicing, the symptoms continued. They were not rejoicing with me. So I, um, I, I, at that time when they said I was negative, I still thought that, no, there may be something happening. So I started on azithromycin and uh, the, the vitamins and zinc and things and uh, anti, uh, IV antibiotics and um, uh, um, steroids. Then the symptoms continued until 
uh, on Friday the 13th, last month, it was not a good Friday, it was on Friday the 13th, I was admitted at Matter Day and I was on oxygen. So um, that was when I arrived at Matter Day. Um, I was on oxygen, I think, for six days or so. And I thank God for those who are praying for me. And one man of God who was with me throughout, through and through, he would phone whether it's 1 a.m. to encourage me and to, he would give me a testimony. It was Brother Kumiso. He would give me a testimony and that testimony would spearhead me too to say, no, my healing is coming. So I was already tested positive on uh, PCR, COVID. So here I was, I was going through the CT scan. I think by the time I went, um, my lungs had already some fluids or things because this happened when I was uh, already strained. I was overworking at that time and Dr. Chim was saying, no, you are fatigued. Your system may not fight very strongly. So, uh, but my testimony was, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of God. So your body will obey your confession. He says, uh, stand firm. Here I was already getting better. I think that was day number four. I was already on nasal prongs. I was not on oxygen. It was, I was on oxygen, but not the mask. I was never on a ventilator. So something happened when uh, Pastor Sinde phoned and, and prayed for me. Pastor Marisa phoned and prayed for me. Pastor Kumiso was like my doctor. He was always there throughout. He would check and, um, and pray with me every time. So I had a visitation that God visited me in a mighty way. And I removed oxygen mask and I was healed. This is the day when I removed the oxygen mask and I was breathing normally. And I was um, out now of, of the the symptoms started vanishing and even the C-reactive protein I think and other markers of inflammation I think like lactic dehydrogenase they fell uh, I'll play that one the, where I was that is the video just play that one um, the markers of inflammation uh, fell from 70% to 20% which was a great miracle and at that time um, things were happening and the my saturation was back to 98 percent that was good it was a miracle at that time i had a mighty visitation god visited me and he started showing me also the time when the prophet had overworked and there was and the time he was taken when he was uh, sick and he was not in ministry for some time that testimony energized me to see how god cares for his own and i knew i was going to come back to ministry because i had a purpose and that purpose was not going to be broken by the devil and i believe I want more souls there in that uh, clinic there. They say, Let me move on to the next. Um, this is where I was and the testimony that happened. I've never been sick. I've never been uh, admitted. That was my first time. And now I have a testimony that God heals. Even Corona, God heals all our sicknesses. Now, let me end by saying this. With God, nothing shall be impossible. So don't allow the devil to steal your testimony, but testify for the glory of God. At home, not even one person tested uh, positive. All of them were negative. Now, God wants to hear your testimony. He asked Ezekiel to say, can these bones live? He wanted to hear from Ezekiel to say, if he says yes, they will live. God used his voice to make it happen. So what are you saying about your situation today? Do you believe God heals all our sicknesses? When I was in hospital, the amazing thing that happened was people would phone me with their hard situations and they didn't know I was on oxygen and I would just speak the word and say, it's over, sister, it's over, brother. From all over the world, from America, from UK, from, from um, Cameroon, they were phoning, but I would just speak the word and you hear the testimony instantly. And it encouraged me to see that God uses his ch children, his servants. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Even when you, are, you feel like you are low, the power of God, that hidden power is still in you. Now, he asked the prophet, can this child live? He wanted to hear from him. So he's asking you, what do you say about your situation? When you say it's over, then it's over. Um, there's that sister who received a prayer cloth and then she pinned it on her garment and said, Mr. Dev, you are finished. That was all she said and she rose from the wheelchair. Sometimes the devil 
He needs to hear your step on faith. When you speak your faith, then the devil has no power to hold you. So, it becomes a testimony when something is revealed to you that is over. Then God, on the wings of a snow white dove, he will send his healing. Faith can never be forgotten from the Father above. It is not secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he can do for you. And I believe this evening, as you raise your faith, as I'm about to pray, whatever your situation, you can testify before you see a miracle. Then you shall see a miracle. If you desire a house, God will give you. If you desire a ministry and you are saying, I want to work for God, God will reveal your purpose, what he has sent you to be. If you desire restoration, if you desire healing, if something has been stolen from you, I remember one time I was listening when, in the message when the prophet was talking about keys that were lost and they prayed and God made them found. And at that time I had lost the keys of my car. I believe the testimony from the spoken word, I pulled it out, raised him from history, and uh, we, we just prayed and I looked and saw where the keys were. When you are looking for something, God can reveal. God can stretch his hand and answer your desires today. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that are given. We thank you, Lord, Father, that we are now witnesses that you heal all diseases. There is no coronavirus that is too hard for you, and you are the great physician. Father, I pray that your children, whether they are facing HIV, cancer, whatever they are facing, may you heal them. Father, may you prove that you are the same and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray, Father, that those who are hearing and they are raising their faith, may they have a testimony even today. May your power overshadow them and visit their homes, visit their workplaces, visit their ministries, visit their children, visit their finances, Father, and prove that all things are possible. Father, through this service and the words that we have spoken, may you make your children testify positively. May they stick there in faith until they see a performance of what was spoken to them. Father, as we end this service, may there be miracle after miracles, testimony after testimonies. As we end the year also in these few days that are remaining, may you visit your people in a mighty and unusual way and show your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, I thank God that by his grace, I'm back and strong and back to work now. It's been now, um, from the time I got sick, this should be now five, getting to five weeks. So I've been healed and perfectly well for two weeks now. And um, I thank God for protecting even my family. You know, in the front line, in the health, we see patients, I see a lot of patients every day. And with the hectic program that I have, doing the surgery work, farm work, and properties uh, administration and things, you are always under strain. And when I was giving the testimony of the maternity clinic, I forgot to mention that that same time, the same time we got the maternity clinic from the same people, same family, we got another property in Paranyatwa. God gives a double portion. So when you believe him, you will see a manifestation of what you have believed. Now, God bless you. Until we meet again, uh, we'll have a service on Sunday. Then next Friday, we'll be privileged by the grace of God to have Brother Zoa visiting us and we'll have an interactive service. He's going to preach for us also two services the next Sunday. Brother Moses Zoa from Harare. Now, pray for the services. Till we meet again, God be with you. Amen. Let me see maybe if there are some people on YouTube. Uh, maybe it's late. Just to, all right, maybe I'll greet them next time because my time now may not allow. Anyway, brethren, it's been nice to be with you. Stay with the word, stay with the message. God, answer you, restore all your strength, restore all what the enemy stole from you. Let me see those who are on YouTube, yes. Um, God bless you, Sister Mtungwazi, Sister Melody, uh, Sister Perita, Sister Rutendo, Sister Tendai Makumire, Sister Precious Chikwe, Sister Kuzai Muchenje, Moses Musekiwa, Rutendo Marufu, Perita Chikome, uh, Kuzai Muchenje, Godfrey Mtunzi, Precious, yeah. all those who are on YouTube, may the Lord bless you all. Uh, those who are on Facebook, um, May the Lord bless you and answer all your needs. Time fails us to 
maybe go, go through and um, share a lot of testimonies, but what we have shared, God will answer you and give you your desires. So, um, I believe, um, I'm just trying to check those on Facebook. Uh, let me check them through my device here. That I see Tapi Wamfundis is watching. God bless you. He is missing on the ground today, but he's watching from somewhere. He's on his way to, to Arare. I see Brian Bule from Zambia, Rachel Bure, Osman Chaganza, Perseverance Gwangwara. Um, God bless you. And all the brothers and sisters who are with us on YouTube and on Facebook, may the Lord bless you. My time, uh, let me check again. My time fails me, but until we meet again, God be with you. Amen.